today, in our daily sketch, we are going to be making three little snowmen. So to make a snowman, we have to think about what is the basic shape of the snowman. So I have my three different ornaments that were from my Christmas tree, and I'm gonna be drawing from observation today. So when I look at these, I'm gonna be using a pencil also. Uh, when I look at these, I'm gonna concentrate, think really hard, what is the main shape here? So the main shape is a circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and practice just a little bit, holding my pencil really straight, and I am going to air draw a circle. And when I feel comfortable, I'm gonna to touch. So I have my first circle, and since I'm making three of them, I'm making two, I'm making three. So it's kind of hard to see the marks. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a different pencil, see if this helps. So I have my first mark, my second mark, and my third mark. So that's my three beginning marks. Then I'm looking, I'm trying to spy for another shape, and I see that is another circle and it's slightly smaller. And again, I use the same strategy where I draw in the air first and then I touch down. I'm gonna go ahead and with my pencil very briefly start making the details for my three snowmen. On each one of them, I'm just focusing on the little tree branch and I'm looking and on this one, oh my goodness, I'm going to have a little bit of overlapping. That means you're going to draw, air draw, and then draw again. Oh, these two are touching. And then on that one, I don't see a lot of the branch. I see a little bit this way and a little bit this way. And then there's like a scarf in there that gets in the way. But this one has a branch similar to that. All right, now I'm going for my second layer of shapes. I'm looking at the main shape, which is the snowman itself, big circle, little circle. Then for the next shape, I see that all of them have two buttons. You see two little buttons? So I'm going to start with that one, two, and while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and do that on each one of them. And I'm drawing like a butterfly. I'm going to all of my drawings at the same time building up the detail. Um, for the next one, I would be looking at the detail of the face. I want to know how the detail of the hat or the headpiece looks like. So it looks like this little guy has a hat and the way I'm going to draw this hat is that it comes out like this. It's like a beanie. A beanie hat and then it goes up and I'm looking very carefully at the details of this beanie hat <laughs> and it looks like that and it has little lines oh how cute is that and again this is still very rough I did all my little lines and the shape of the beanie and little lines on the top and I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that point I move on to the next one concentrating just on the head and what's going on this guy has earmuffs earmuffs for the second snowman and it has this little thing it looks like a spiral and that's the top of the earmuffs so cute and on this one I have a hat and I'm looking at my uh, snowman there you go I have to hold it up a little bit because otherwise it's a little bit confusing hold on it goes like this like an arch and then it goes back oh and then it comes up right here on the edge of the circle and then it's kind of like a floppy hat and it goes out this way Wow very fancy it's a top hat and you see the bottom of the hat like this 
Very good. And the more you see, the more you can see. The more you look, the more you can see. Okay, I'm gonna put him back on his little pedestal that I made out of um, sticky notes. Now that I have that much done, I'm going to the third layer. Now I'm gonna look at their scars. And again, I'm gonna hold my little snowman in front of me and I'm going to take a look-see and see what it looks like. So it looks like right here we have a scar and then it goes like this and it comes on top of this button and it comes all the way out like this. Oh, I see a little bit of it on the back. And then it's okay to draw one thing on top of the next. You see like this, it's called overlapping. And then later we're gonna erase some of it. That's part of drawing. So that's why you have to draw softly because then you have to determine what's in front and what is not in front. Now, since I'm working on it and I'm holding the snowman in my hand, I wanna make sure that I'm not moving things around too much and losing vision of that point of view. So I wanna stay in the same point of view and I'm gonna make the little mouth and I'm gonna make the little cone for the nose, which is really a carrot, and then the beady eyes. And I'm gonna look again and see if I made it as far as it needs to be. So you have to pay attention to where does it start and how does it curve and where does it end. So we're gonna go back here and I think that's gonna do it for that one. Now for this one, I'm gonna hold it up. See, I'm holding it up in my hand, taking a good look at what does this object look like. Oh, this one is so adorable. I guess they're all adorable. Uh, this one goes like this. You can see the scarf coming out. It has this shape and it actually it comes out and it touches here. Oh my goodness comes out and it ends up right here and it's like this scarf is on top of the other scarf yep it's gonna end up and always have an eraser handy because erasing is part of drawing so that is very important and When you remember that erasing is part of drawing, then you're not so frustrated when you have to erase, and it is okay. And you're trying to get as close as you can to the original object, but the more you practice, the better you get at it. And until then, just keep practicing and don't give up because it's not always gonna be perfect. And that's what's really great about the daily uh, sketchbook drawing is that you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry that it has to be perfect, that it's for something or the other. This is just practice drawing and you are just putting your ideas on paper. And then later when you're creating a project, you can refer back to your drawings and that'll be super helpful. A lot of times you like mash up some of your previous ideas that you thought about and you can see them clearly on your sketchbook. And that's what I love, love, love about my sketchbook is that it allows me to expand on my own work. It lets me go back, revisit my thoughts, and then like create almost like a mashup or a puzzle with my own pieces that I've created at different points in time. So having a sketchbook should not be something that you feel, oh, so pressured, no. It is something that is meant for you to relax and doodle. So it's your doodle book. And to experiment, try things out. There you go. So these are my three little snowmen. Now I'm looking at them. They're not perfectly even, perfectly perfect, and that's fine. What I wanna do is that I wanna create a little bit more. I wanna put a little bit of a background back here, and I'm just gonna make a little mountain. Watch me, I'm gonna draw here, air draw, touch down, then air draw, touch down, air draw, touch down. And I'm gonna create more mountains. 
look at this, and then when I get to this point where it's touching the hat, air draw, stop touching, go like that, and right here make another one. Perfect. So now I have a background to go with my sketch. And I didn't have to do that, but I love doing that. Now I'm gonna go and clean my drawing just a little bit. I'm gonna use a skinny Sharpie. Let me see, because there's a lot of delicate details on this. And once I use my Sharpie, I can go ahead and erase all the pencil marks. Later, when I feel like it, I can go back and I can actually color my snowman. If I feel like it, when I feel like it, it's something that I have ready to go and it will take me less effort. And then I just realized, ooh, this branch is in front. So now I'm starting to see my overlapping. Watch this. I'm going to erase this little bit. And I'm going to erase this little bit. And you have to be constantly making decisions. This is what's so special about drawing from real life, um, that you are deciphering it. You're making decisions about what to keep, what to take away. Um, and how to interpret what you see. And it doesn't always have to be a full on interpretation and like a photocopy or a photograph of what you're drawing. You wanna get as close to what it is as possible, but you can also take liberties as an artist and you can change things a little bit, change it up make it more suitable to what you're trying to get done and to the message that you're trying to convey and just be creative with it. It's kind of fun to take something and then kind of reinvent it. That's part of the fun and part of the creative exercise that you are doing when you're sketching with no particular agenda. You are not trying to have a final piece, not really. Right now I'm just doodling. This is my sketch of the day. So thank you so much for joining me and letting me share with you how to draw the little snowman from my tree. And you can draw things that are all around you, things that you see, things from photographs, things from real life. And look, you don't have to be all stressed out that, oh my gosh, this circle has to be super perfect. There is a beauty on seeing the human hand, that bit of nervousness, the line that is not so perfectly perfect, that gives a human touch to your work and makes it more romantic, more beautiful. So allow yourself to be human, allow yourself to feel, allow yourself to create. This is your world. So I'm finishing off this part. And just take your time. The more you relax, the better it will be. And don't be afraid to make mistakes. If you make a mistake, be creative. And maybe something beautiful will come of it. Something that you weren't planning. Sometimes those are happy accidents. And you end up with something more beautiful. All right, and I'm making the hat. Oh, the hat is so hard. It's hard to make the hat. <laughs> and there we go. Don't forget, just break it down into shapes one little section at a time, break it down into lines. I love the patterns on this. It's like a little plaid pattern, so I'm gonna add a little pattern in here. There's little patterns on the scarf, so I'm gonna give it just a little bit of the pattern. I am not going crazy with it, but a little bit of it is nice. So that's this one, all done. Wait a second. 
I don't know if you noticed, but when I'm doing the eyeballs, I'm trying to leave like a little hint of light, a little hint of white, and that gives it three dimensionality. Like it makes it look all beady and cute. As you make the buttons, they are buttons, so you can go ahead and do your four little sections that you would sew through <laughs> if you were actually sewing this. Yeah. And all of these have plaid, so I'm gonna use these hanging for plaid. And there's draw. And I still have some pencil marks on this one. I gotta erase, no big deal plaid design. How wonderful. I'm gonna make these lines a little curved because this fabric happens to be curving a little bit. And for now I'm just making it like this, but if you really wanted to spend a lot of time and concentrate, you could really, really make these very special. Right now we're doing a quick sketch. We're trying to stick with about 10 minutes, somewhere around 10 minutes. And maybe double. So keep in mind your design. So this one has double horizontal. So here we go, double horizontal. And then a couple of these that go through. Then a single one. Then a double one. And there's my pattern, it's very nice. You can do the same thing with this, go over it, air draw, go over it, air draw, go over it. And at this point, we're basically tracing this section. And then we're gonna use the eraser. To get rid of the marks. So this is how normally a sketch or a drawing would look and you can leave it all pencil or you could like outline it with ink. I like to outline it with ink then revisit later on at a later date and when I come back I like to do like a color study. Um, I go ahead and use my color pencil. Sometimes I use marker. It's really up to you what you want to use. Color pencils are super awesome. Don't forget that if you use color pencils, you need to have a special sharpener that is just for your color pencil. I like to use this ones right here and have like a little container like that. I recycle. So I use it for putting my shavings and I just continue to work like that. This is designated just for um, I have one for color pencil and it's just like this and then I have another one for my graphite pencils and that helps not to get the the blades dull because they dull out with the wax from the color pencil and I didn't know that eventually I learned it um, always have a very good quality eraser that's something I would spend money on getting a good eraser and uh, that will help you to clean your picture more easily. Okay, guys, I think um, we're finished for today. That should have been 10 minutes. Maybe it was a little bit longer because I did three, three little snowmen. <laughs> and these are so special. I hope you enjoy it. Now you know something that I know. See you tomorrow.